In 20 years of travel, the old Chevy has explored every county in Maine except one, a rustic. There's a sensible reason. It takes a full day to get here. So with the fall days dwindling to a precious few, I jounced my way to Maine's largest and northernmost county. More than 6,600 square miles of forests and fields hard by the Canadian border. It's not as iconic as the lobster, but here in Arusta County, the potato is king. The acreage devoted to the spud stretches as far as the eye can see. I'd actually seen the potato harvest years ago when a plane brought me here. The three of us had dark hair then, two farming brothers from Mapleton, Randy and Scott Smith, and a visitor from Boston. You did, nice to see you again, glad you're good. Very good, very good. Yeah. Still beating the pavement. Two of us are now grandfathers, and the Smiths are still making a living from potatoes. Although in 1997, they sold their farm to Irving Industries of New Brunswick. Scott still works for Irving as a farm manager. Randy directs a Presque Isle research farm for the University of Maine. The Smiths had cast their lot with large-scale mechanized farming, but chose to sell when they couldn't grow any larger, an economic necessity, says Randy. There was only so much land they aren't making anymore. Back at the time when I, we, then I decided to make a career change, land was uh, not available at any price. Just down the road, we witnessed a timeless aristic scene, school children picking potatoes by hand. The schools here still close for up to three weeks during the harvest season, even though a shrinking percentage of children actually work in the fields. But for those who do, the money comes in handy. So how many barrels might you do in a day? I... Me, uh, 35 to 40. 35 to 40 yeah. barrels, that sounds like a lot. It's it's not bad for a first year, but. How much money can a, a person make? It's about a dollar per barrel. Change is afoot in the county. Windmills have been built or proposed in many locations. So many that the region may soon have more power than it needs. The plan is to sell the excess once the county ties into the New England power grid, a project now in the planning stage. Even the University of Maine Presque Isle is putting up a windmill. Perhaps it'll help power the lights at the Reed Fine Art Gallery, which in 2008 opened its collection of Andy Warhol photographs for public viewing. To the amazement of gallery director Sandra Huck, this small college in far northern Maine was among nearly 200 U.S. schools given photographs from the Warhol Foundation. How's it been going? It's been going great. It's yeah. been going great. It's, we've had a lot of publicity. Um, a lot, there's been a lot of interest and also a lot of questions. Wait a minute. This isn't Andy Warhol. This isn't what we're accustomed to. I think it's been a great educational tool and it will continue to be so. Warhol took thousands of photographs of individuals whose portraits he'd later paint for handsome sums. They were mostly society figures, but this one of hockey great Wayne Gretzky is from a 1980 series of athletes. I think that was a selection for the area too. Yeah, oh yeah, this being a big hockey area. Another eye opener to this visitor who hadn't been to a rustic in some 25 years. There's a lot more to the county than potatoes, and the locals have always known that. Mm, so beautiful up there. Arusta County, though, is a long drive in any vehicle. Never mind that one, one that was nearly 40 years old when Peter pointed it toward the county. That was back in 2008.